Hello, I wanted to talk you through your art and propaganda assignment. So let me go to your page. And here you can visit the Getty Center, the Norton Simon, the Broad, MoCA, LACMA. You could also go to Huntington Museum, any major museum. And you must go in person. You can check it out online first, but you should go in person. Bring this museum paper guidelines with you because you don't want to miss details and have to go back. So old propaganda. So in the museum, you're going to find something that is at least 200 years old or more. It can be something that aggrandizes a ruler or makes them seem more than they are. Um, it can have something to do with politics. It can be an advertisement. Um, something about war. Uh, war is good. War is bad, right? So negative or positive. This could be incredibly powerful portrait busts. Um, of rulers. It could also be big, you know, uh, paintings of rulers making them look uh, particularly important. So let's look at something that immediately when I think of um, important rulers, I think of, let me see, Napoleon, right? And so here, uh, here's one by Jacques-Louis David, which is most certainly in your book. And here's another one by Angra, and both are of Napoleon. And here he's being shown larger than life, um, charging over, um, uh, you know, the mountains. And here he is almost godlike uh, on a throne as, as Jesus has been depicted enthroned with the symbols of power, scepters and crowns and things. And actually here he's an emperor uh, with a golden laurel crown because remember he did not want to be king he crowned himself emperor of France and wanted to kind of reinstate uh, the Roman Empire except it would be the French Empire with him in charge so that's properly aggrandizing so this would be something that you could find obviously not these famous examples but in a museum or something where somebody is you know built up in an incredible way and you would have to talk about Napoleon and who he is and his history and the artist that created the work and, and any scholarly work, uh, any scholarly writings talking about that. And you would only choose one. So that's one from the museum. So say I chose this one. Okay, oh my goodness, he's larger than life. He's incredible. He's stoic. He's serious. He's powerful. And then, and see, all I did was Google propaganda art. I got this really funny. Um, cartoon poster image of, who is that? Adolf Hitler. Let's catch him with his panzers down. You know, panzers were tanks during World War II, but here they're using it as a joke. So this would be a great compare contrast because instead of finding something that's aggrandizing, you're finding, you know, uh, an image of someone who's terrifying and the technique is to bring them down to earth and actually make them appear ridiculous and silly. So you could do, if you couldn't find information about the artist who particularly did this work, you could find articles that talked about satirical wartime posters. And how do you do that? So you go Oviet, Oviet Library. Okay, so here we are. and databases. So this is where you're going to find scholarly articles that you will use throughout your college career and you don't access these if you're not a student anymore. These are all pay sites that you can access free as a student at CSUN. I also have a virus on my computer. Okay, so you can browse these online databases by subject, right? So you could find it this way. Or you could do it by name, like say if you knew you were looking for JSTOR, J-S-T-O-R, which is your go-to art history site, okay? But let's just, for giggles, look at art. And these are the ones that are the most useful for you. And if you have any troubles, go see Nancy Young and she can direct you in the right direction. Um, art full text, so this is publications and abstracts, so you might want to look here. Art index. Art store is mostly um, extreme close-ups of artworks, which is fun if you love Northern art and Jan van Eyck in particular. So let me show you what I mean. So 
So you love Jan van Eyck and you want to see extreme close-up of one of his very detailed works, you look on Art Store, and this is just for goofing around, but it's really fun. You see the plus minus here? So you can zoom in, zoom in, back to results. Oh! Zoom in. And keep zooming in on any detail you want. So what is that in that niche over there? My goodness, it's another statue of the Madonna and Child with two candles. Look at the tracery here. Look at the little trefoil design. It's fantastic. Okay, but let's get into the meat and potatoes, shall we? So let's get out of Art Store. Golly, it's hard to get out of Art Store. And keep moving on to, you could also use Oxford Art Online. JSTOR. This is the granddaddy of all of them. JSTOR. So you do and we're just going to see what happens. Films. Let's see. Propaganda. Cultural history. Poster. See? You could start hitting interesting things in JSTOR, and it's really up to you what you find. Uh, you could also say propaganda art and satire or funny. Start using keywords and see what you find. And it's really up to you. Let's get back out and see. Oxford Art. Hmm. Okay. See? So you could find something. Uh, uh, for your sources. Now when I talked about your assignment um, and we used Angra's Napoleon and then we um, had uh, the silly Hitler one as its counterpart, you could also find this Napoleon at the museum and do something that's aggrandizing of a ruler of the last 200 years. So you don't have to go serious to funny. Um, you, your thread through the two images could be aggrandizing and aggrandizing, or your thread could be about power or uh, being depicted as incredibly powerful. So I just chose the counterpoint because you can do that. You can have your thread being powerful and then powerless. Um, um, So, you know, so you can choose things. Look, I mean, you could choose something that also showed, you know, him as, you know, a poster that showed, you know, Germany as, you know, incredible and, you know, uh, godlike. Uh, so you can choose power and power. You could sh choose something where it says, um, you know, that war is terrible that you find at the museum, something about the horrors of war. You could also do that. Um, so what you do is you're just looking for a, a through line, uh, something that shows, um, say the propaganda was about food being plentiful. And so you find something at the museum about, you know, a family eating food, you know, during wartime or, gosh, what can we think of? Um propaganda of healthy, well-fed soldiers, and then you find something uh, recently. Or you go to um, Getty Villa and you see, you know, Augustus. Um, 
And if you go to the Getty Villa, it's all Greek, ancient Greek and Roman. So what you're going to find is um, portrait busts of rulers. So yes, they're, see, you could say, here I'm going to talk about rulers being depicted as endlessly youthful and idealized. And then so the propaganda that you would look for um, in the last 200 years would be of a ruler who looks incredibly young and is very airbrushed and looks strong and mighty and healthy because almost certainly Augustus was not this handsome. And here if you can see his little forelock is in the shape of a C. It was to remind people that he claimed that he was related to Venus, the goddess. So he was of divine lineage. He was the divine Augustus. And this is to remind you of the little crescent moon pin that she wears in her hair. So all of this is propaganda to remind you of how important he is. So let's see. So let's see if we could find something uh, showing someone as important. This is, I think it's Lenin, you know, and here he is strong and they're going to go to space and he's got people fighting for him. So this would be, you could compare this with Augustus. See how quickly that happens? So you'll have to do some goofing around on the internet, but I think you'll find themes. Let's see. Fighting famine by canning food at home. So if you were to go from this and try and find something at the museum, it would be about doing all right and doing your part in wartime. So I don't, you know, it's, it's tough to try and find something first and work backward at the museum. It's better to go to the museum, find something, figure out what the theme is, and then try and match it to something else. Okay, the theme is, um, you know, strong soldiers. You know, maybe you could find something of a Greek soldier looking, you know, ripped and buff or um, uh, people, you know, rushing to war, rushing over the battlements, um, and then you could do it, you know, against this. So I hope this makes your assignment clearer, you know, that war is awful and that the Germans were terrible brutes um, and that you had to destroy them. You know, that, that this, is, this would be demonizing the enemy or dehumanizing the enemy. And then you could find something at the museum against that. So does that make sense? If you have any questions, email me. But definitely, um, you know, get on it. It's coming. But now at least you can uh, find your sources uh, on uh, the Oviet Library website. And it is really helpful. They have, um, and this is what scholarly resources are. So your, your sources must be appropriate. Um, uh, peer-reviewed. You can't get it from a blog and obviously not Wikipedia, so this would be the best place um, to get it at. Okay, does this make sense? All right, here we are back home. See, son. Okay, uh, email me with any questions, but get moving. It's coming up. Okay, thanks.